bit of background about Squire is uh, we're an eight generation uh, family owned independent lot maker, uh, British. The business was started about five miles away from here yep. in an old industrial revolution style cottage back in around 1780s when a father with his two sons started really to start making locks in any particular volume. During the uh, Napoleonic Wars we, was, we were very much uh, supplying the armies with locks and various types of hardware items. Uh, but I would say it's the early 90s when we started to get into the motorcycle market when we really were starting to uh, develop really high security padlocks for the commercial markets and there was obviously a crossover into the motorcycle market married up together with uh, high security chain. The reason we're, we're launching the new SS100 which will be uh, launched shortly is the fact that uh, as a company we really pride ourselves on developing and producing and manufacturing the very toughest locks on the market and therefore we always want to be one step ahead of the professionals and to that end we can see that the type of tools that they're using to break in to locks into security devices for motorcycles is increasing um, certainly with the onset of uh, portable angle grinders which are now featuring in lock tests themselves then we see it we've got it's our duty to produce stronger and stronger locks and whilst currently we have the strongest padlock in the world in the SS80 we don't want to stop there we wanted to go one step ahead and the SS100 is a new dimension for locks. The SS100 is a step up from the SS80 padlock which we currently sell and uh, we believe is the strongest production padlock in the world and so it is greater in terms of overall dimensions, thickness of body, thickness of shackle uh, and general strength is increased um, by 30-40%. Uh, um, it is a twin cylinder padlock as opposed to everything else that we do being a single cylinder. When you think about a design, you have to think, can we actually make it? In terms of stuff like sizes of holes and sizes of the body, can you buy billet in those sizes and so forth, so you don't come up with any silly sizes. From there, so I would design that using 3D CAD. Initially, I would get prototypes made by our tool room. Maybe some of the parts I would have made uh, by, by 3D printing. Um, so that we can see if, it, if it's actually going to work, but then we would have to make physical steel samples so that we can make sure there are no weaknesses, nothing's going to break easily, or we haven't missed uh, a crucial flaw in the design. Uh, so once we, the tool room have made the samples, we'll do some initial testing on them, tensile testing, and then we're ready to press the button and put it into production. In our test area, we would test um, various parts and locks uh, to destruction to see uh, if they meet the standards that we have set for them. So we do tensile tests where we pull locks to destruction. Um, with the SS100, that would be around 24 tonnes. So our tensile test machine only goes up to 20. So we have to take it somewhere else. We would crop uh, the shackle material um, and we would also test for actual hardness of the shackle, the body, the module, uh, all the parts that are hard and we would do hardness checks on them. Well we would carry out um, torque twist tests on the lock so that we would hold the body and then try and twist the shackle and break the lock into pieces, simulated somebody maybe sticking a bar through the shackle and trying to twist it apart. Um, we would test for sawing and we would test for drilling to, to make sure that, the, that everything is hardened all around the, the, the body of the lock. Once the, the, the lock has been approved um, then we would then start to look at designing the tooling for it which, which the tool room would make 
in general and they would be used to machine any parts that we can make here. So turned parts would be made uh, at a local supplier uh, but any machine billet we would, uh, and shackles we would do ourselves. We would take a square billet for something like the SS100, we would put machine radiuses on the sides first of all and then we would machine the body uh, with all the cavities in it to, to take the, the parts such as cams, balls and uh, locking cylinders. So then we would um, heat treat the parts which are required such as the body and the shackle uh, which is made from bore on steel. Uh, we would then um, have them plated in some way, whichever way we choose for the different parts and then uh, we would bring them back here ready for assembly. This is done by, first of all you would have to check that the shackle is set properly because they can move in hardening and we have tools to do that. Um, you would match the shackle to the lock, then you would grease inside, add the balls, cams and cylinder and finally the module and then you would insert screws to hold everything in place and the final bit is to put a sleeve and a boot uh, on it for weather protection. You can have cylinders built uh, especially for your product so if you'd like uh, a whole set of locks made to a master system then we would build those. Uh, we would also make uh, cylinders built to differ so that means you could have 10 working off exactly the same key and we could have different profiles on the keys uh, which are harder to get hold of so such as a protected profile which you could only get that key cut by ourselves and you could have um, dimple keys as we call them where the uh, instead of having a sawtooth key you the cuts would be in the side and look like little dimples in the key. Criminals are never going to stop finding ways to try and defeat our security products, but likewise we are never going to stop trying to find ways to beat them.